everyone i hope you're all having a wonderful day welcome back to my channel today i am making a video about my favorite books slash good books to read in quarantine i'm gonna list them in order of how i've read them so the first book i, I read is gonna be first and the last book the most recent one that i read is gonna be last okay so my first book is going to be a separate piece by john Knowles. the cover looks like this i read th i've read this book three times already i read it in seventh grade or sixth grade but i think it was seventh grade in tenth grade and about two and a half weeks ago two weeks ago two and a half weeks ago all of these books are my favorite books so i don't have to say that i love them all but i do love them all this one is about a boy named gene and his best friend phineas they are in kind of boarding school and it takes place during world war ii and it's about their friendship and how a friendship or a person can influence you so much how the war has influenced all of the boys in the school how a friend can make you feel about yourself and also how you can admire a friend so much and still be jealous of them and they can make you feel lesser but you still admire them so much and it's a really good book and it brings back memories of my school because I went there from nursery till seventh grade when our school closed and so reading that there brings me back and we all we had to do an essay about in the beginning of the book Jean is visiting the school and then he like retells the story and we had to write an essay about us going back to our school in the future and it's just weird now that that school is closed so this brings back a lot of good memories so for all of the books I'm gonna read the back the little blurb that it has on the back so this is a separate piece and it says Set at a boys boarding school in New England during the early years of World War II, a separate piece is a harrowing and luminous parable of the dark side of adolescence. Jean is a lonely, introverted intellectual. Phineas is a handsome, taunting, dared athlete. There's a little thing of where my school used to be, so I don't know if it's cutting off words, but I'm doing the best that I can. What happens between two friends one summer, like the word self, something, some word with a B, the innocence of the boys and their world. A bestseller for more than 30 years, a separate piece is John Knowles' crowning achievement and an undisputed American classic. I really, really recommend this book as I do the rest of them. My next book is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I'm sure everyone knows of this book and the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio. This book is really famous. I also read this book in, I think this one was seventh grade, I'm pretty sure. And then I read it again in 12th grade, I think. And then we also watched the movie in 12th grade. The movie, I'm not as big of a fan of it as I am of the book. I think the book is much better. And if you're going to read or watch it, I would suggest reading the book instead. I'm sure everyone knows what this is about, but I'll tell you a little bit about it. So this book is narrated by Nick, and he is neighbors with... A man named Gatsby who is super rich very popular he has a giant house he becomes friends with Gatsby and these are so hard to tell without giving away more of the plot Gatsby is in love with a woman named Daisy and they had dated before now she is married to a man named Tom Buchanan and it's all about their love story and I love this book because it's beautifully written. I love the idea for Gatsby of wanting to relive the past and kind of that optimism and almost heartbreak of how you can't but he can't accept that you can't relive the past obviously. It's really good and it's a beautiful book. Again there's a sticker here. Oh, should I even read it? I'm, I guess I'm not going to. I'll, I'll read as much as I can. The Great Gatsby, F. Scott Fitzgerald, something, as the supreme achievement of his career. This something, something, something. The Jazz Age has been acclaimed by generations of readers. The fabulously wealthy Jay Gatsby and his love for something, something, Buchanan, of lavish parties on Long Island at a time when, I don't know, Times noted, gin was the national drink and sex the something, something is a, an exquisitely crafted tale of America in the 1920-something. I'm assuming 1920s because that's when this book takes place. The Great Gatsby is one of the great classics of the 20s. And this book takes place during the Roaring Twenties and all of the parties that ensue during that time. It's really, 
really fantastic. My next book I read as it was a summer reading book. I think I was going into I was going into 11th or 12th, I believe. I think I was going into 12th actually, but I can't remember exactly. But it's called The Last Lecture by Rand Randy Pausch. I think is how you say the last name. This is a book written by Randy Pausch and he worked at Carnegie Mellon University and they have a tradition there where a professor would give their last lecture. Randy's last lecture, he's been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer terminally and so most of the teachers there would give a last lecture about what subject they were teaching or something of that nature but Randy's last lecture was about his childhood dreams and how he achieved them. He wants his children to remember him through his last lecture. So it's all about how he achieved his, his childhood dream. I'm not a big crier, just in general in my life. Movies usually don't make me cry. TV shows don't really make me cry. Songs don't really make me cry. But the thing that really does make me cry are books. I cry all the time with books and this is a real, real tearjerker. It's so emotional and so beautiful and how he wants his children to remember him through this book and through the last lecture is really, really beautiful and I have so much highlighted in here and written on the bottom. Every page has something highlighted, more than something highlighted and written on it because there are so many beautiful quotes. It's a really beautiful book. This doesn't have anything on the back written, it's just a picture of Randy and his family. So it has something written in the front. Oh, and the thing, the ones that have a cover, I'm also going to take the cover off and show you what the book looks like because I like, I just like to see books without the cover on them. So this is the front and on the side it has gold writing. The inside says, it starts with a quote, it says, we cannot change the cards we are dealt just how we play the hand. And that's Randy's quote. A lot of professors give talks titled The Last Lecture. Professors are asked to consider their demise and to ruminate on what matters most to them. And while they speak, audience can't, audiences can't help but mull the same question. What wisdom would we impart to the world if we knew it was our last chance? If we had to vanish tomorrow, what would we want as our legacy? When Randy Pausch, a computer science professor at Carnegie Mellon, was asked to give such a lecture, he didn't have to imagine it as his last since he had recently been diagnosed with terminal cancer. But the lecture he gave called really achieving your childhood dreams wasn't about dying it was about the importance of overcoming obstacles of enabling the dreams of others of seizing every moment because time is all you have and you may find one day you have less of it than you think it was a summation of everything randy had come to believe it was about living in this book randy pausch has combined the humor inspiration and intelligence that made his lecture such a phenomenon and given it an ind indelible form it is a book that will be shared for generations to come. And I believe his lecture was filmed and also put on YouTube, but even just reading that little blurb made me tear up a little bit because it's really beautiful and and really touching. I really recommend these books. Also, a lot of these books are kind of sad and they have a lot of death in them, but I like sad books. A lot of them are happy as well. They, even if they, have sad moments to them, they are happy as well. So my next book is called We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. The back says, we are Sinclairs. No one is needy, no one is wrong. We live at least in the summertime on a private island off the coast of Massachusetts. Perhaps that is all you need to know, except that some of us are liars. This book is about the Sinclair family. They are a very privileged family. They go every summer to an island that their grandfather owns and spends the summer there. The main character of the book is Cadence Sinclair. She has a head injury, so the book is her remembering what happened and telling the story, sort of. It's very suspenseful. When I was reading it the whole time, I was like, what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen? So you're like, what's true? What should I believe? What really happened? What didn't happen? It's very suspenseful and very good. It's what it looks like without the cover. It's very pretty. It's gray and white and then here has this metallic gray. I really... silver, I guess you could call it. I really like that. I love the idea of the family putting on a show for everyone and I know people that their life just looks so perfect and like nothing could possibly go wrong and just putting on a show for people to think you are perfect and obviously no one is perfect so that whole 
persona of perfection is so interesting. So my next book is called Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Looks like this. I love the color of this book. It kind of matches my nails a little bit. This is like my favorite color, kind of coral pink color. I love it. And this is about a girl named Kath and her sister Ren. They're twins and they're going off to college and Ren doesn't want to room with Kath. And Kath is kind of introverted, shy, depends on Ren. And so that she doesn't want to room with her anymore is kind of a big shock and nerve wracking for Kath. So it's about her growth as an individual. She writes fan fiction for a book called Simon Snow. It's about her coming into her own and breaking away from her sister. My descriptions aren't, I feel like aren't doing the books justice. So I'm sorry about that, but just know they're all really fantastic. I'll read the inside cover. A coming of age tale of fan fiction, family, and first love. Kath is a Simon Snow fan. Okay, the whole world is a Simon Snow fan, but for Kath, being a fan is her life and she's really good at it. She and her twin sister Ren sconed themselves in the Simon Snow series when they were just kids. It's what them, it's what got them through their mother leaving. Reading, rereading, hanging out in Simon Snow forums, writing Simon Snow, Snow fan fiction, dressing up like the characters for every movie premiere. Kath's sister has mostly grown away from the fandom, but Kath can't let it go. She doesn't want to. Now that they're going to college, Ren has told Kath she doesn't want to be roommates. Kath is on her own, completely outside of her comfort zone. She's got a sh surly roommate with a charming, always around boyfriend, a fiction writing professor who thinks fan fiction is the end of the civilized world, a handsome classmate who only wants to talk about words, and she can't stop worrying about her dad, who's loving and fragile and has never really been alone before. For, Co for Kath, the question is, can she do this? Can she make it without Ren holding her hand? Is she ready to start living her own life? And does she even want to move on if it means leaving Simon Snow behind? This is what the book looks like without the cover. I've actually never looked at it without the cover before. I really like it. And there's a little coffee cup that says Kath. So the next book is The Skies Everywhere by Jandy Nelson. I love this book. The characters are one of my favorites of the 15 books that I have here. Um, so it starts with a girl named Janie. Lenny, I'm sorry, Janie, which <laughs> Lenny. Her sister Bailey has just died. They were super, super close. So it's about her moving on from her, her sister and how she handles grief, how the other people who were affected by Bailey's death also handle grief. She lives with her grandma and her uncle. It's beautiful. There's a love story. I'll read the front first size. It says, one boy helps her remember, the other lets her forget. Okay, so the back says, adrift after her sister Bailey's sudden death, Lenny finds herself torn between quiet, seductive Toby, Bailey's boyfriend who shares her grief, and Joe, the new boy in town who bursts with life and mus musical genius. Each offers Lenny something she desperately needs, though she knows if the two of them collide, her whole world will, will explode. Join Lenny on this heartbreaking and hilarious journey of profound sorrow and mad love as she makes colossal mistakes and colossal discoveries, as she traipses through band rooms and forest bedrooms, and ultimately right into your heart. As much a celebration of love as a poignant portrait of loss, Lenny's struggle to sort her own melody out of the noise around her is always honest, often uproarious, and absolutely unforgettable. I fell in love with Joe. I love him. He was one of my favorite characters and does remind me of a boy of the book that I most recently read that you'll see at the end of the video. I really recommend this book. I think at the end I'll go over which ones are my favorite favorites of all of these books. They're all my favorites, but I'll go over which ones I really strongly recommend if you don't want to read all 15. Like I said, you should. So my next book is called Beautiful Broken Things by Sarah Barnard. It says, I was brave, she was reckless, we were trouble. The front cover is beautiful. It's a beautiful like kind of army forest greenish with the gold broken glass kind of effect that it has. This is a beautiful story friendship and it's kind of refreshing to not read a love story and sometimes as much as I love them it is also just as powerful and just as amazing to read a story about friendship. This one is a story of a girl named Caddy who is our narrator and her best friend Rosie. They go to different schools. Rosie goes to a public school. They've been best friends forever and a girl named Suzanne comes into Rosie's school and kind of brings her in to Rosie and Caddy's friendship and in the beginning Caddy is very tentative because she doesn't want someone to replace her and that whole worry of someone being friends with your best friend it goes from there so it says I'll read the back 
Caddy and Rosie have always been inseparable, but that was before Suzanne. Now Caddy wants to be more than just the quiet one. She wants something to happen. Suzanne is trying to escape her past and, some, and be someone different, someone free. But sometimes downward spirals have a momentum of their own and no one can break your heart like a best friend. And then in between each thing it says, I was brave, she was reckless, we were trouble. It's a fantastic book and it deals with mental health and coming from an abusive family. So my next book is Frozen Charlotte by Alex Bell. This is about a girl named Sophie. It begins with her and her best friend at a coffee shop and they're going to do like a Ouija board as an app. Don't read this at night by yourself unless you love scary stuff. Sophie goes and visits her cousins who she hasn't seen in a very long time. She has three cousins. One is Piper, one is Cameron, and one is Lillian's, I think. One of her cousins has died and she hasn't seen them since then so she's going to visit them now the house that they live in used to be a school they still have the dolls that used to be at the school and it says on the back it just says charlotte is cold a bunch of times frozen charlotte this is what the book looks like without the thing frozen charlotte very nice i like this color and on the front i don't know if you yes i think you can see it, it says charlotte is cold another charlotte is cold when her best friend dies under mysterious circumstances, Sophie's- oh, I guess I can spoil it then. They play the Ouija board. I think her, her friend's name is Jay. He dies on his way home from the coffee shop because something with the Ouija board happens. When her best friend dies under mysterious circumstances, Sophie sets, sets off to stay with her cousins on the remote Isle of Skye. It's been years since she last saw them brooding Cameron with his scarred hand. Piper, who seems too perfect to be real and pecu peculiar- Little Lilia's with her fear of bones. Oh, I messed up her name before. It's Lilia's, not Lillian's. I think that's how you pronounce it, Lilia's. Still, Sophie never expected the strange new rules of the family the family now lives by. Make no mention of Cameron's accident. Never leave the front gate unlocked. Above all, don't speak of the girl who's no longer there, the sister whose death might have closer ties to Sophie's past and more sinister consequences for her future than she ever knew. A wondrously haunting and modern thriller, Frozen Charlotte drifts with mystery and madness, secrets and survival, and the chilling sense that the impossible might be all too real. So my next book is called Lying About Last Summer by Sue Wallman. In the spaces between the words, it says, you can't hide the truth forever. This book is about a girl named Skye and her sister, her older sister has died and her parents are forcing her to go to a bereavement camp. She's really tentative to go. She's kind of traumatized by her sister's death. Um, you will see why. She feels lost without her sister. She goes to this camp and doesn't tell anyone about how her sister died. She starts getting um, text messages from her, her dead sister and she feels like someone is stalking her because the person who is sending her messages is describing her outfit and what they see and it's really horrifying and you don't know who at the camp to trust and you don't know what the truth is. Frozen Charlotte is more scary. This and um, We Were Liars are more thrilling and suspenseful. So I'll read the back. In I'll read the little words first. It says it's time to face the truth. And also this book is, is kind of textured. It has a, a kind of, I can't describe it, but it has a texture. Okay, it's not just flat. Last summer, Sky sisters died in a tragic accident. Now she's looking for an escape from reality. Her parents think that a holiday camp for bereaved teens might help her move on. At first, camp doesn't seem so bad, but when Skye starts receiving texts from someone claiming to be her dead sister, she fears the past is about to surface. My next book is called The One We Fell In Love With by Paige Toon. It cover looks like this. Fangirl. These two are um, the longest of the bunch that I've shown so far. So this one is about sisters who are triplets. They're all girls, that, they're identical triplets named Phoebe, Eliza, and Rose. I am a triplet, so I love this book. I'm not identical. I have a sister and a brother, so this book is especially interesting to me. So there's Phoebe, Eliza, and Rose, and they are very different. They have very different personalities, but they have one thing in common, and that is the boy that they are all in love with named Angus. And the book is written in each of their perspectives, so each chapter is a different sister's perspective. Phoebe is caught between a rock and a hard place. Settle down to, and get married or return to the French Alps to pursue her passion. Eliza is in love with someone who is no longer hers. In fact, he probably never was. And her dream of becoming a successful musician seems to be vanishing before her eyes. 
Rose is out of a job and out of her boyfriend. To make matters worse, she's been forced to move back in with her mother. But these very different girls have one thing in common, Angus, the one they fell in love with. It's Stay Hungry by Sebastian Maniscalco. I am a giant fan. He is a comedian. He's so hilarious. His whole perspective is making fun of everyone around him and people bothering him and it's just it's so funny. I've seen him twice in real life. I saw him at Radio City Music Hall on his on the Stay Hungry tour and that's where I got this book. It was such a hilarious show. The set, the stage was beautiful. That one was filmed for Netflix so I know that that one is 100% on Netflix. If you've ever seen one of his comedies then reading this book you like you'll read it in his voice. He's very successful and it's about how he started comedy and came into his success and his upbringing and a lot of his comedy is also about his family and so you learn about his family in this book. If you like Sebastian Maniscalco you'll love this book. If you don't know who Sebastian Maniscalco is then watch his comedy specials and read this book and you'll love him and if you don't like him rethink your opinion. The book without the sleeve. So I'll read the inside. It says, the inspiring, honest, uproarious collection of essays traces Sebastian Maniscalco's career from playing boxing rings and bowling alleys to reaching the pinnacles of comedy success. At 24, Sebastian arrived in LA with a suitcase and $10,000 saved. He knew no one and nothing about stand-up comedy, but he was determined to go for it anyway. At 44, he's on the Forbes list of highest earning comedians, sells out theaters and arena arenas, arenas? arenas all over North America and has starred in four hit comedy specials including Why Would You Do That on Showtime. Stay Hungry tells the story of 20 years in between. On the way from clueless young man to stand-up superstar, Sebastian was booed off stages, survived on tips and free meals, got advance, got advice from mentors, from mentors Andrew Dice Clay, Vince Vaughn, Tony Danza, and Jerry Seinfeld, fell in love and stayed true to his Italian immigrant roots. The one code that always kept him going, stay hungry, keep focused, never give up, and one day you'll make it. It's really inspiring. I love reading about people that I know, their success stories, and um, I find them really inspiring. So my next book is Me Before You by Jojo Moyers. Moyers? I don't know. This is what it looks like. I did not see the movie, but it was a very popular movie, so I'm sure a lot of people have seen it. The book centers around a girl named Louisa Clark. She is in desperate need of a job and she can't find one. So she goes to like kind of a kind of a job fair type place and she gets a job helping a paralyzed man named Will. Will has gotten in an accident and he's paralyzed. He was engaged to someone, the engagement is broke off. He was very successful before his accident and now he's paralyzed from the like neck down. His mom hires Louisa as kind of a last effort. It's kind of Louisa's job to not only take care of him but to want him and convince him that his life is still worth living even though he has these problems. Louisa Clark is an ordinary girl living an exceedingly ordinary life, steady boyfriend, close family, who has barely been farther afield than her tiny village. She takes a badly needed job working for ex-master of the universe, Will Trainer, who is a wheelchair bound who is wheelchair bound after an accident. Will has always lived a huge life, big deals, extreme sports, worldwide travel, and he is not interested in exploring a new one. Will is ac ac acerbic. Acerbic, acerbic, I don't know, I'm sorry. Moody, bossy, but Lou refuses to treat him with kid gloves, and soon his happiness means more to her than she expected. When she learns that Will has shocking plans of his own, Lou sets, sets out to show him that life is still worth living. Me Before You brings to life two people who couldn't have less in common, a heartbreakingly romantic novel that asks, what do you do when making the person you love happy also means breaking your own heart? My favorite scene is the scene where they're on the beach kind of toward the end of the novel it's really really heartbreaking and it's a beautiful scene my next book is called the loneliest girl in the universe by lauren james i don't know if you can see this once again i love this like coral pinkish color it's my favorite it obviously takes place in space if you 
cannot tell. So this book is about a girl named Rami and she has lived her whole life on a spaceship called the Infinity. Her parents were on a spaceship. They got pregnant with her while they were there. So she's lived her whole life on this spaceship. So her parents die and now she's alone and her only contact with, with Earth is her contact with her therapist from NASA. I think she's going to some place called Earth 2. NASA is sending a ship called the Infinity to kind of, I think it's gonna like join with her ship and um, they're going to go to Earth 2 together. Along the same lines of Lying About Last Summer and We Were Liars, this is also a thriller. It's not horrorish, but it's very suspenseful, very entertaining and scary, but more, it's suspenseful and not like horror scary, you know? Days since the infinity left Earth, 6,817. Rami Silvers is no stranger to life in space, but she never knew how isolating the universe could be until her parents' tragic death left her alone on the infinity, a spaceship speeding away from Earth. Rami tries to make the best of her situation, but with only brief communications from her therapist on Earth to keep her company, she can't help but feel like something is missing. It seems like a dream come true when NASA alerts her that another ship, the Eternity, will be joining the Infinity. I don't know if I messed this up. Rami is on the Infinity. The other ship is going to be called the Eternity. Rami begins exchanging messages with Jay, the captain of the Eternity, and their friendship breathes new life into her world. But as the Eternity gets closer, Rami learns that there's more to Jay's mission than she could have imagined, and suddenly there are worse things than being alone. Really good book, really suspenseful couldn't put it down and it makes me remember my time in Arizona so love it. I'm going to put in a bonus book right now because I don't have the book with me. I lent it to my friend a while ago and I haven't gotten it back because she didn't finish reading it and whatever whatever but I don't have it with me to show you and that's why I'm going to put it as a bonus book out of let's see after the last lecture this would be the first book before we were liars so it is by um all the right places by what's her name I can't think of it um Jennifer Niven, I think? No. Is it Jennifer Niven? I think it's Jennifer Niven. I'll, I'll put it below. Um, I believe it's Jennifer Niven. If I'm wrong, forgive me. I'm gonna, put, I'm gonna link everything below or at least list them if I can't find a link. I think it's Jennifer Niven. Okay, anyways. It's about a girl named Violet whose sister has just passed away and a boy named Theodore Finch. And he's referred to mostly in the book as Finch. I think a movie of this just came out on Netflix. I have not seen it. It's really heavily about depression and suicide and they meet on top at their school on top of the I think it's a bell tower and they're both going to jump and it's a story of their love and finding happiness in both of their troubled times and it's heartbreaking and really good Finch is one of my favorite characters it's a beautiful book so that's the bonus book so you get 15 but kind of 16 um, it's a bright blue cover I think it I think it has a bird on it it has like post-it notes on it I believe also. My next one that I have on the list, I just read this over the weekend. I read this one in two days. There's different parts of this book and I was gonna, I think there's four parts, and like this is part two, so each thing has a section and I was gonna save it for four days but I couldn't put it down so I read it in two with doing homework in between otherwise I would have been able to read it in one. So it's called They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. This is the cover I love this co color um, of the cover, sorry, I'm having, tripping over my words. It's beautiful blue, and there's dark, the dark blue with the stars. Those are the two main characters on the front. A lot of these books are from the two Zoella book clubs, and that's, or from school, and that's how I found out about them, but Me Before You, I just wanted to read The Loneliest Girl in the Universe, this book, and my next book I just saw on Barnes and Noble, I think. I, I forget what I looked up, but I was judging a book by its cover and the covers just made me want to read them. It's kind of easy to describe because the title, I don't really have to worry about spoilers too much because the title says what happens. It's called They Both Die at the End. It is a beautiful, beautiful story. It's about two boys. One is named Mateo, who's very introverted, very, he has a lot of anxiety. He lives with his dad, who is in a coma right now. And the other boy is named Mateo, who is in a foster home because his mom, dad, and sister have died. And so he lives in a foster home and he has three best friends there. One is his ex-girlfriend named Amy. One is, I forget how to pronounce the name, let me read it. I'm sorry. 
Tago, T A G O E. I had to get the spelling of his name. I don't know. I don't know if you pronounce it Tago, but that's how it's gonna be pronounced right now. And then Malcolm, and they call themselves the Plutos because Pluto is a forgotten planet, and they will not forget each other because of their their friendship is so strong. So they call each other the Plutos, and it's I love that. It takes place in New York City. This is the skyline. I'm not. I'm describing so much. This is the skyline behind them, and it takes place in 2017. There's teleservice and they get a call on their death day they don't know how and they don't know what time that day they're gonna die this book takes place from Matteo and Rufus's perspective each chapter goes from Matteo to Rufus to Matteo to Rufus but there are some chapters in this book that are from characters in the book and we get it from their third person I like it because each of the characters somehow their story is intertwined with Matteo and Rufus. Another complaint I heard, I I watched some people's reviews of this book, was that they wanted to know more about the, it's called Deathcast. People were upset that you don't know more about Deathcast, but I don't mind because it's from the character's perspective and the characters don't know much, much about Deathcast, so it doesn't bother me that we don't know how Deathcast started. Matteo and Rufus have very, distinctive voices. Oh, another thing that I like about this book, it says what time it is throughout the day. But if you opened a page to, if you opened to any page, if I read this page, I would be able to know if it was Mateo or Rufus because their voices are just so distinct and so different. So they meet, they both get this call and there's an app called Last Friend. It's an app for people who are called Deckers and those are the people that are gonna die that day and for non-Deckers who are just regular people who haven't got the call. And the app is for Deckers and Deckers or non-Deckers and Deckers to unite if you're lonely and you want to spend your last day with someone, it's called Last Friend. So that is how Mateo and Rufus meet. This book, not only the story itself is fantastic, if you knew that you were going to die, how would you, how would you spend your last day? And how can you make every day special? Not only that perspective is so interesting and something that I think a lot of people think about but haven't wrote a book about it, but the characters in this book, I love the characters especially Mateo I love him but Rufus really was my favorite I loved Rufus I can't recommend this book highly enough I know I just read it but I think about it all the time it's it's really really fantastic I want everyone that I know to read it I'm gonna read the back and then since it's b between Rufus and Mateo's perspective I'm gonna be reading the first page of Mateo's perspective and the first page of Rufus's perspective and you'll see how different they are we here at Last Friends Inc. are collectively sorry for this loss of you. Our deepest sympathies extend to those who love you and those who will never meet you. We hope you find a new friend of value to spend your final hours with today. On September 5th, a little after midnight, Deathcast called Mateo Torres and Rufus Emeterio. I'm sorry, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I pronounced it. To deliver some bad news. They're going to die in less than 24 hours. Mateo and Rufus are total strangers, but for different reasons, they're both looking to make a new friend on their end day. The good news is there's an app for that. It's called Last Friend, and through it, Rufus and Mateo meet up for one final epic adventure to live a lifetime in a single day. Also, something I forgot to mention, Mateo's Puerto Rican, Rufus is Colombian and bisexual. So there is diversity, it's not just a white heterosexual couple if you are interested in books like that this is a good read for you i love i love the i don't know what you call them at the beginning of the book who you like dedicate the book toward okay but i'll read it for this one it says for those who need a reminder to make every day count so it begins september 5th 2017 mateo torres 12 22 a.m Deathcast is calling with the warning of a lifetime. I'm going to die today. Forget that. Warning is too strong a word since warnings suggest something can be avoided, like a car honking at someone who's crossing the street when it isn't their light, giving them a chance to take a step back. This is more of a heads up. The alert, a distinctive and endless gong, like a church bell one block away, is blasting from my phone on the other side of the room. I'm freaking out already, a hundred times, a hundred thoughts immediately drowning out everything around me. I bet this chaos is what a first time skydiver feels as she's plummeting out of a plane or a pianist playing his f first concert. Not that I will ever know for sure. It's crazy. One minute ago, I was reading yesterday's blog entry from Countdowners where Deckers chronicle their final hours through statues and photos via live feeds. This particular one about a college junior trying to find a home for his golden retriever. And now I'm going to die. I'm going to. 
no, yes, yes. My chest tightens, I'm dying today. I've always been afraid of dying. I don't know why I thought this would jinx it from actually happening. Not forever, obviously, but long enough so I could grow up. Dad has been drilling it into my head that I should pretend I'm the main character of a story that nothing bad ever happens to, most especially death, because the hero has to be around to save the day. But the noise in my head is quieting down and there's death cast Harold on the other end of the phone waiting to tell me I'm going to die today at 18 years old. Wow, I'm actually, okay. That's where I'll end it. Mateo's 18, Rufus is 17. So this is Rufus's chapter beginning. It says 1.05 a.m. Deathcast is hitting me up as I'm beating my ex-girlfriend's new boyfriend to death. I'm still on top of this dude, pinning his shoulders down with my knees, and the only reason I'm not clocking him in the eye is because of the ringing coming from my pocket. That loud Deathcast ringtone everyone knows too damn well, either from personal experience, the news, or even shitty show, or every shitty show using the alert for that dun-dun-dun effect. My boys, Tago, 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 sorry, and Malcolm are no longer, <sighs> my dog is scratching at my door. This is Lily, Lily, look up, look at the camera, who are you? Good girl, hi Lily, Lily, who's there? Look, look up, this is my dog Lily, she's going to be five in June, and she is um, the love of my life, I'm obsessed with her, her little, look up Lily, her harness is Lily on it, um, I don't know why she's not looking at the camera, but I love her, and there she is, hi Lily, oh look at that face, Lily, oh, good girl, oh good girl. Dun 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 effect. My boys Tago and Malcolm are no longer cheering on the beatdown. They're dead quiet and I'm waiting for this punk Pex phone to go off too. But nothing. Just my phone. Maybe the call telling me I'm about to lose my life just saved his. You gotta pick it up, Roof, Tago says. He was recording the beatdown. Because watching fights online is his thing, but now he's st staring at my phone like he's scared a call is coming from for him too. And the last book I have, The Start of Me and You by Emery Lord like this i just finished this book yesterday so i started reading they both die at the end i think on sunday and monday and then i read this book on monday and tuesday the little thing at the bottom says it's never too late to rewrite your story and she's diving into a swimming pool which is significant for the story it is about a girl her name is Paige. she is i think going to be a junior in high school. It starts out over the summer that she's going to be a junior. She dated a boy named Aaron. He died in a swimming accident. They dated for two months and it is about um, her grief of his death even though she didn't know him for that long and it's more about um, her guilt and how others look at her because they know that she's a girl with the dead boyfriend and I hate it when I keep on doing that in every video and I wish I wouldn't because I don't do it in real life but it's like I swallow and then I'm like and I don't do that in real life, but I seem to do it in all of my videos, and it's annoying me, but I will make a conscious effort. I've probably done it like 10 million times in this video, but I will make a conscious effort to stop doing it, and um, I will make more of an effort for the rest of this video to stop doing it, because every time I edit one of the videos, it annoys me to no end, but I can't, I guess I can't seem to help it, and I don't do it in real life, so what am I doing it now? I don't know. There, oh, I just did it. Did you see that? Did you hear that? Probably. She is in love with a boy named Ryan Chase, who they've gone to school with forever. She also has three best friends, Morgan, Kaylee, and Tessa. And this is all a story about relationships, but also, a, I mean, like romantic relationships. It's also a great story about friendships and how much friends can do for you and how you, how you need and how friendships are about how friendships are just as important as romantic relationships. Since the death of her boyfriend Aaron she makes a page makes a list for herself to follow and things that she wants to change and who she wants to become and instead of just living in the shadow of being the girl whose boyfriend died so she has a bunch of things on the list and one of the things she does is she joins a club at her school called quiz bowl and it's like like a trivia club and like you go and compete against another school and do trivia and whatever and oh Sorry. Someone she meets on the team is named Max and he is Ryan's cousin. Max is the character that reminds me of Joe in The Skies Everywhere. I love both of the characters. I'll read the back. It's been one year since it happened. When Paige Hancock's first boyfriend died in a swimming accident, she shut out of almost everyone. Now Paige has decided it's finally time to rejoin the world and she has a plan. First on the list, go out with Ryan Chase, her longtime and newly single crush. And last on the list, swim. Terrifying yet possible. But when Ryan's sweet nerdy cousin Max moves to town and recruits Paige for the quiz bowl team of all things, her perfect plan is thrown for a serious loop. 
Starting over isn't easy, but Paige knows the scariest things are usually the most difficult. Can she face her fears and open herself up to life and love again? That's the question. It will be answered if you read the book. I'll scoot you in a little bit closer. Okay. I'm sorry, I did not do, I don't think I did the best job at describing them. Um, I don't think I did the best job at reading out of them. Um, but I hope I did a good enough job for you to want to read all of them. Oh, and what I did want to do was, um, at the end I said I would, um, go to, at the end of the video I said I would say which ones I really think you should read out of all 15. If you don't want to read all 15, like I said, I think you should read all 15, but I will go through which ones I really, really, really recommend the most. I guess I will do this by which ones have resonated the most to me, especially now going back and talking about them again and which ones I feel have the best meaning and which ones are the most entertaining for you in my opinion. So the first one I'm going to start with is the last lecture because I could cry right now about how moving his story is and I think just the fact that it's his his last cry <sighs> His, his last impression for his children if I remember right they are young when he dies and how he wants his children to remember him and his philosophy for living every day as if it's your last and being happy and doing what you want with your life and wishing that he could be the father for his children that he wants to be and he's getting that chance taken away from him his speech was for his children and obviously it's a very emotional and it's a beautiful story. So this one highly, highly recommend. Okay, my next one, We Were Liars, fantastic, so suspenseful, love the story, definitely. And it's a very quick read, it's one of the shortest reads here, so definitely this one as well. So, so far the last lecture, We Were Liars. I think the next ones are going to be The Skies Everywhere because I fell in love with the character of Joe and just the story and grieving from losing a sister who was so important to her and yes, love this one. Beautiful Broken Things. It's a beautiful story of friendship and how much you are willing to do for a friend even if it's a new friend. Beautiful story. Beautiful cover. I love. Okay, anyways. If you love or know of Sebastian Maniscalco, this is definitely a must for you to read because it's hilarious and inspiring and if you love him then you'll love this book. All the Right Places, that's beautiful. They both die at the end because the story is wonderful and very creative and love the characters. So that is where I will end this video today. I hope you enjoyed all of my book recommendations. I do really want to read more books but I don't have money right now to buy more books on Instagram. I do have, um, I'll, I always put my Instagram at the end of the video, but I'll put it down below too in case people don't watch till the end and they want to follow me on Instagram. I have a little like story page on my quarantine reads so you'll be able to see everything that I've been reading so far in quarantine. I hope you enjoyed my assortment of 16, I think, books that I had here. If you do end up buying any of them, even if it's just one of them, I would love to hear your thoughts about it because to, they're all really fantastic. If you end up reading any of them, comment them below if, which one you read, if you liked it, if you have read any of them and want to talk about them, you can message me on Instagram. Like I said, I'll leave it below and it's always at the end. I'd love to talk about the books. So thank you for watching. My next video I think will be my favorite movies slash good movies to watch in quarantine. This video will probably be more on the long side. The one about the movies will probably be much shorter because there's less of a description for movies and I love books because they're like a long movie that you can make in your head but movies are more straightforward and easier to talk about. The one about the movies will not be as long but I hope it'll be just as good if not better so thank you for watching. Come back if you want to see a list of my favorite movies and movies I think you should watch in quarantine. Thank you so much. Thank you.